welcome listeners, both old and new. Hello there. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And you found the Bible Reloaded. You have. So, if you joined us two weeks ago, we began our journey with Abram, now Abraham, on his biblical journey Mm -hmm. to become the patriarch of the Hebrew nation. That's right. And also he uh, cut a whole bunch of foreskins. It's kind of his prerogative now. It's kind of nice. And we won't really get into that much foreskin action until... uh, Well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, so today we'll be continuing with one of Atheist's favorite stories, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. So why don't we just start right off? All right, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 18. We're going to summarize much of this as we discussed two weeks ago. Yep. Okay, so what happens is some visitors come and visit Abraham where he's living. Mm -hmm. And he, as would as custom dictates he says oh welcome welcome to my home let me uh get you some food and we'll wash your feet which is a traditional thing that comes right. up in the bible uh a and, couple times uh, it's very important to note that in hebrew culture uh hospitality is one of the main things that is preached and and taught and 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 practiced it's it's one of the most important social aspects of hebrew culture is being hospitable towards people that's why you see them wash their feet mm-hmm. you always often in the old testament people are invite other people to their homes and almost treat them better than the people that live inside their own homes yeah the washing of the feet it just it denotates respect right and then uh, uh, making them bread and shit like yeah. that so anyways continuing abraham just treats these men well yep uh, and then One of them says to him, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Which is interesting, because if you watched last episode, or are familiar with uh, biblical text at all, Sarah, formerly Sarai, has been barren the whole time that uh, her and Abraham have been married. Yes, and that resulted in Abraham knocking up one of her servants. Yeah, good episode. You should watch. A you should watch Abraham one. I agree. But yeah, they say to they say to him, "Your wife's going to get pregnant." Bear in mind that they are in their nineties at yeah. this point. I believe. I believe she's ninety. He's about a hundred. I may correct that later, but. You get the idea. Okay, continuing directly from the text at verse 10. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, and she thought, After I am worn out, and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child, now that I am old? (laughs) Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. I like that the Lord's like, why'd you laugh? Yeah. What are you talking about? 90-year-olds have babies all the time. Oh, wait, they don't? Oh, my bad. That was (laughs) supposed to be an all-life thing. Yeah. I I didn't give you enough eggs? That's weird. (laughs) I specifically in the designs was like, have them produce new eggs. But they did that for the sperm instead. It must have have dropped off when the analog uh, system of the Tree of Life fell, too. Yeah. You should go watch that episode as well. It's not very good, but still. Whatever. It's got us in it. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, verse 15. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh, but he said, Yes, you did laugh. I love that fucking line. I love that phrase. Yeah, you did, bitch. Yeah, yeah, you did. And that's just the end of that section. That's the end of the whole section. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you did. I'll give them this. They have good comedic. They have good comedic timing, whether it's intentional or not. Okay, so continuing, verse 16. I'm going to summarize again. Essentially what happens is, the men get up to leave. The men who are, as we now know, angels of the Lord. They get up to leave, and then the Lord, There's we get sign of court, sort of a Shakespearean aside from the Lord, which I really like, and I'm going to read it as such. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him, for I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so the Lord will be bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Forsooth. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) so great Shakespearean thespian actor. I know Hugo. I'm I'm wonderful. Anyway. Anyway, So God is just saying, should I tell him what I'm about to do to Sodom? And the Lord finally does say, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. So essentially what just happened there is God said, I'm getting these prayer messages on my goddamn cell phone. Yep. Hey God, have you seen Sodom and Gomorrah? That place is shit. Look at them. And God says, I better check this out. Again, showing that he apparently doesn't have omniscience because he doesn't already know. Right. And he says, I'm going to go check this out. So if they are wicked, I'm going to destroy them. And he then, 
as I'm going to explain to you, he does tell Abraham what he's about to do. Abraham then pleads with him and says, what if, what if there's 50 righteous men in this city? Yeah. Are you going to destroy it, or are you going to save it for the sake of those 50 righteous men? The Lord says, well, if there are 50 righteous men there, then I will save the city for their sake. And it goes down, Abraham continually lowers the, way down to the 10, number. I think. It goes 45, 30... Doesn't uh, matter, dude. Then it gets all the way down to ten, and the Lord says, "If there are ten righteous men there, then I'll spare it." So now we're on to we're on to actual Sodom and Gomorrah, actual Sodom and Gomorrah, chapter nineteen. So this is what actually happens: the Lord does not find uh, ten righteous men apparently, because nope. shit's about to go down. Seems like he finds one and his family. Yep. If you'll remember a while back in part one, Abraham and Lot separated, Lot being Abraham's nephew. Now we get back on him and see what he's doing over in uh, Sodom. Mm -hmm. The two angels, the same angels, might I add, that were just with Abraham. Uh, The one is uh, apparently not going. Yeah, interesting. That is is correct. It says in chapter 18 that there were three visitors, but here it says two angels, so one must have left for whatever reason. Or I, I knew that answer a while ago. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. Again, we have the washing of the feet, the sign more of respect. Hosp- more hospitality. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. Whoa, what Interesting. Are they doing? What's about both to happen? Young and old. All the men of the city. Like everyone from like 13 to. This is biblical time, so I'll say 903. <laughs> okay, so it works for me. Yeah, so they surround his house. Wonder what's going to happen. Weird. Verse 5. They called for Lot. Where are the men who came with you tonight? Well, that's a, that's a valid question. I mean, maybe they're just curious, right? It's weird that the entire town knows about this, though, this well, one thing. Well, I mean, but okay. you know, word gets around, right? Small mm-hmm. community, maybe? All right. Well, let's see what they have to say. Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yeah, I- what? Yeah, Why? so... Wait, 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 wait. Slow the fuck down, guys of the city. That went so quick. They they didn't even... Weren't like, hey, can we go to dinner first? You want to catch a movie? Let's fuck them in the butt. Yeah, uh, so all... Every single man in the city, yeah, I, both young and old, mm-hmm. came to find these two people at yeah. Lot's house. Angels. And uh, said, we should probably fuck their butts. I mean, to okay. Now a lot of people attribute this Sodom and Gomorrah to God saying, "You know what? Homosexuality is bad, and people, you shouldn't do it." That goes aside from the parts in Exodus and uh, Leviticus when they give laws to where your homosexuality is a sin or whatever. But in this specifically, this is brought up often. And if you're an atheist and you're outspoken and you argue with Christians, this comes up all the time. You need to know this, but just so you know, you do need to know this. And it's very important to know that in Christian and Hebrew mythology, angels are not male or female. They are androgens. They are always beautiful, supposedly, and they're always asexual. So just because they look like men doesn't mean they are men. And to add... These people, like, they're beautiful, androgen people. It's like if Hugh Jackman walked in the front door. Hugh Jackman is anything but androgen. Hugh Jackman is all man. He just loves show tunes. Orlando Bloom walked in the door (laughs) without the mustache. You're like, man, that's a good-looking person. We should fuck his butt. That's fair. But anyways... (laughs) Comedy aside, people do bring this up, and I've had heard this bring up. God is against homosexuality, Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you don't know, if you haven't heard the term sodomy, this is where it comes from. Mm-hmm. No, this this verse is not about anti-homosexuality. It's about anti-angel rape. How right. about that? If you would like to pass a law that says we can't rape angels, fucking cool, fine. I That's, guess. That, I guess. Can, but but you, better you, pass a, you better pass one for equal rights for unicorns then, too. I agree. I would agree. But... Here's the thing, if you're going to bring this up in defense of your terrible homophobic views, fuck you. Yeah. You need to read it. You do. 
Continuing on. Okay. Verse 6. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him, and he said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Whoa. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do whatever you like with them, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Okay, so here's another thing. Oh, sodomy is really bad, but you can give your fucking daughters up to a, a fucking group of violent gang rapists. And it's not even like, I mean, I'm not defending rape in any way. This isn't one guy like fucking, I'm going to kill you all. If you, and yeah. No, this is a group of people who are would violently rape both his daughters, I assume <laughs> to death, with that many people, just the violent penetration. You can only fit so many peepees into one hole before it rips. Wow. That's not a thing. I, as friends, this is an aside. This has nothing to do with this. Milestone. As friends, that is not a sentence I ever thought I'd hear you say. You can only fit so many peepees into a hole before it rips? Yeah. That's true, though. I, I'm i not arguing. That's it's just one of those things that you shouldn't have to say. That's Well, I shouldn't have to say don't rape anybody. You shouldn't have to, but... I shouldn't have to say don't off your, your, your daughters to a violent gang of rapists. Well, see, it's cultural. But right now I'm saying that. Okay. We'll just delete that whole thing. It's all right. This is, this is a good friendship growing moment for right. us. Right. <laughs> Fuck you. Did we end that thought? <laughs> Did we, like... Why don't you just finish that sentence one more time, and then we'll just do it again. <laughs> just but finish. don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Um, how about don't offer your daughters up to a violent gang of rapists? Yeah. So, you think, you think that God's condemning sodomy here, but he's totally cool with offering up your teenage daughters to be raped by a gang of angry men, both young and old. Uh, fuck you. Fuck you with your own Bible. I mean, this is, this, Lot is a, is a hero of this fucking story, by the way. Yep. Fuck this. Okay, here we go. Verse 9. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and he now wants to play the judge? We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. So Lot, as you may have picked up here, is a foreigner in this land, but they're saying, this guy's a foreigner, he can't tell us what we can and cannot rape with our dicks. Wow. I disagree with that sentiment, sentiment but whatever. That, I mean, minus the rape part, that sounds a lot like fucking xenophobic Americans in the South about Mexicans. Yeah. Can't tell us what to do. Can't take our fucking jobs. They're taking their jobs. They're taking their jobs. That's our little piece on immigration. <laughs> <laughs> We're on. topical. All right. Okay. That's it. Continuing. Verse 10. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old with blindness, so they could not find the door. I find this funny, just imagery. They yeah. pulls a lot in, closes the door, strikes everyone, all the young and old men of the city with blindness, so they can't find the door. So they're blind rapists, just poking around with their hips. Here's my thought, though. They're already at the door. They know where the door is. That's I mean, they I'm might thinking. be freaked out by the blindness, but they're not completely dumbfounded. One of one of them gets daredevil powers. <laughs> Satan comes. Give him daredevil powers. Now he's a more efficient rapist. Wow, you'd be the best preacher. I sure would. Anyways. Anyone who knows anyone with a church, let us into the pulpit for a while. <laughs> Let's rock this. Verse 12. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here? Sons-in-laws, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of there. Because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. That's a pretty dire... Right. You know, he said, the Lord is about to destroy the city. Do you see what's going down? Yeah. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. <laughs> Oh. Direct quote from the Bible. Yeah. What? Can you imagine Lot running? The God is about to destroy the city. <laughs> You're funny, man. <laughs> La, you crazy. <laughs> this is stupid. Verse 15. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you'll be swept away with this when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hands, the hands of his wife and his two daughters, and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. Really? Yeah. Really, Bible? You're defining that as merciful? The God who's about to destroy an entire city based on wickedness that they never even touch upon as to what it is other than the rape of angels? Yeah. 
I don't know. I mean, obviously, that's them trying to illustrate the wickedness, but at the same time, that's all you get. Yeah. Why, are, why are they wicked? Clearly, you're saying that their nature is rapey, but at the same time, I mean, was it really everyone? No, of course it wasn't. It's very ambiguous to it. I'm the, just... They're the just saying Wicked City, God's going to destroy everyone except one family, and he's merciful because of this. I would disagree. I would, too. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you'll be swept away. Remember, he said, don't look back. Remember that. We're going to need that later. Verse 18. Balat said to them, No, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life, but I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to. It is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well. I will grant you this request, too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of. Because he had intentions to beforehand? So this town isn't even wicked, and he's just saying, well, you're going there now, so I won't. it won't be in my collateral damage, because I can just choose that, but I'd chosen it to be in my collateral damage what? anyway. What? Whatever, dude. Okay, God, you're drunk. <laughs> but flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down, burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew these cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities, and also the vegetation in the land. What did the vegetation do to you, God? <laughs> it provided sustenance to the peoples of these wicked lands. Fuck you, tomatoes. <laughs> but, but Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Shouldn't look back, bitch. Yep, they told you not to, but here's the thing. Really? Looking back at an explosion of sulfur, you get turned to salt? Sulfur dioxide? Don't bring chemistry into this. Chemistry is too good for this. You're right. I'm sorry. But seriously, let's think about that morally. Arbitrary rule. Something religion is all about. Don't look back. She looks back. It's not hurting anyone to look back. God just told her not to, so she's dead. Not only dead, pillar of salt. Yeah. And that's the last we ever hear of her. When you hear this story in any other context where a preacher might talk about it, or even in a children's book, because yeah. there are children's book of a lot of Bible stories. Yeah, it's like, uh, she was told, and she violated God's will. It's one verse. Human it's literally curiosity, one verse. And I'm pretty sure her daughters are following behind her. Just Good saying. parenting, maybe. I don't know. I think we can all decide at this point God's a dick. Yeah. Early next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land, like smoke from furnace. So why isn't he salt now? He looked back. Is it a time constraint thing for the next five minutes? Don't look back or I'll fucking kill you? Well, God, that's put, not a, even, God that's, put a undisclosed statute of limitations on sightseeing around Sodom and Gomorrah. So. And it's not like the angel said, don't look back or we'll kill you just said don't look back like I feel like if he had said that she probably wouldn't have looked back I know we're still on this but this is pretty morally reprehensible usually when you say don't look back it's kind of like a it's like a metaphorical thing that Bruce Willis tells to you as you're running away from some sort of drama movie right don't look back but no this is like Bruce Willis being don't look back or I'll shoot you in the fucking head Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Elba. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Oh, that's nice. I had to. No, you didn't. You brought in BW. Shut up. So when. <laughs> Verse 29, So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. This last verse, verse 29, it sounds as if it's wrapping it up in a pleasant way. Yeah. Almost. It's like, and that's why God is so merciful. Did they read the same story that we read? He killed everybody. Including I mean, the women and children of the rapey guys. I know. And here's the thing. I mean, I know we all kind of imply, hey, you guys should read along with us. Uh, and I know most of you probably don't, that's fine, I don't expect you to, but at the same time, I'm sure most of you somewhere can find a Bible. If I'm going to tell you to read any story in the Bible for yourself, this one's one of them. Please yeah. read it. We have about, uh, in the Old Testament, eight probably essential, essential stories that you should read. And if you watch, you'll, you'll hear us read them anyway. But this is one of them I think everyone should read for themselves before they are like, hey... Go Christianity! No, Woo. you need to you need to read it, and that's uh, if you do want to read it, that is chapter nineteen. I agree, and uh, and actually, 
read the entirety of chapter 19 all the way up to 20, which we're about to do. Yeah. Because this is fucking ridiculous. Yep. Go Let's ahead. Let's get ready for incest. Also, rape counter debut. I had to keep, I had to wipe. Verse 30. Lot and his daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains. Funny, though, I noticed when I was reading this for research before we do the show, because we do read this through before we do it, we do kind of a cold run. Earlier, he specifically says, the angels tell him, go to the mountains. He says, I don't want to go to the mountains. Yep. I want to go to Zor. Okay, yeah. go to Zor. Next thing, they left Zor to go to the mountains. All right. For he was afraid to stay in Zor is the very next line. Yeah. Why? Weird. I don't know. Anyways. Anyways. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man around to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. Okay, so before we read this next part, nobody in this story is the bad guy. What we're about to read, zero people are reprimanded for what they are about to do or what they have done. This is just a factual this statement just, of what happens. This is just what happens. In Hebrew culture... Being a widow, which these two girls are, because if you listen back, they were meant to be married to those two stepsons that didn't leave. They are now widows, and being a widow is one of the most difficult situations for a Hebrew woman to be in during that time, because you can it's so hard to remarry, and in the Hebrew culture, a woman's basic function is to have children. And without husbands, you cannot have children because they, uh, you know, they're very strict about marrying and then having a bunch of children and stuff. And being a widow definitely impedes that. So what you're about to hear is their pursuit of that function. Verse 32. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. Yeah, so the Bible is advocating date rape, incest, and uh, apparently three ways with sisters. Well, they do it separately. They do it separately. Yeah, I guess, but she's yeah, there. In a cave. there. They're in a cave. There's they're not, there. like, different rooms. It's so I guess voyeurism they're... at best. Okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> that night, they got their father to drink wine. I'm interested as to where they got the wine living in a cave. Cave wine. Okay, that's good. And the older daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it when she laid down or when she got up. I like I like how the Bible words things sometimes. Yeah. I'll give it this. He was not aware when she laid down or when she got up. So he wasn't aware when she did them. Yeah. I don't know. When she when she was clearly cowgirling. Yeah. Come on. All I'm right. pretty impressed that like being so blackout drunk and that he could get it up. You could coax a boner out of a sleeping man at almost any point in their life, I know from experience. What have you been doing <laughs> when I'm not around? That's what I want to know. Why is our friendship happening when well, you... I came out wrong. I mean, I've been coaxed into bonerism while being asleep, but I guess... Sure, if you want to think that I... Uh... Well, I mean, Go just into the, your room at night and jack it. No, just the way, just the way you said it. <laughs> Can we hear that back? You could coax a boner out of a sleeping man at almost any point in their life. I know from experience. Yeah, it sounds like you're going into people's rooms and seeing if you can get sleeping men to get boners for whatever weird fetish you have. You don't know me. Okay. <laughs> Why is this on this show? Verse thirty-four. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, "Last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight." <laughs> And you go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through the father. Okay. Of course. I have something to say about this. And it's a little vulgar, but I have to bring it up just on a factual basis as for fact-checking the Bible. Just do it. So the father didn't notice anything weird the next morning. So he's like, wow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I had sex. <laughs> so they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Benami. He is the father of Ammonites of today. So yeah, that's pretty heavy stuff, and uh, that's all there is to that, I guess. That's part two of our Abraham Redux. Woo! So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Sorry for all the kind of vulgar content, but honestly, it's, the, it's this there. is in there. I and it will get worse. And it's straight from the Bible. This is what you take your kids to on Sunday if you are a Christian. This is the kind of shit you're exposing people to. Seriously, if you ever ask an atheist, what's wrong with religion? What's the harm? In um, Christianity, this, um, as I hold up the Bible that you can't see because we're audio. Here's the thing. I actually had a discussion with someone the other day uh, about this. What's wrong with Christianity? Mm -hmm. Here's what I told them. I don't think there's anything wrong with Christianity. 
I There's agree. a difference between wrong and incorrect. Christianity, if you follow it, by no means are we ever saying it makes you an immoral person. It does not. It's no. just a belief. But if you try and force that on other people or force it into government, I think that's wrong. Yeah. However, the idea itself of Christianity, not people, the idea is incorrect, in I agree. my opinion. Anyways, I think that's about it for today, Jake. Yes, it is. Um, so, cool thing happening next week. What's happening, Hugo? God off. God off, motherfuckers. So for those of you who didn't, you guys voted on a special episode you wanted to see. Sarah Riley uh, thought up the idea for us to have a bracket-style tournament in which we face gods from different theologies against each other. Yep, so we're going to get a list of gods together. Yep. We're going to bracket them together. Yep. Uh, we'll flip a coin. Jake will get one. I will get assigned to the other one. We'll both debate on behalf of this god. You will vote in the comments then about which god wins, but that'll be next week's. So- Get ready for that, and uh, hope you guys had a wonderful election day. Oh God, I, this is we're we're recording this before that happens, so we don't know who wins. Yeah, interesting. I guess we'll find out. Interesting. Congratulations, uh, Barack Obama. Congratulations, Mitt Romney. <laughs> Look at that. Covered our bases. Yeah. Okay. So. Anyways, uh, if you like us, feel free to share us on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, StumbleUpon. Yep. Anywhere you want. Spread Absolutely. the word about us because we like doing this and we like people listening to also, us. You can, you can tell us when we're wrong, etc. And new t-shirts coming soon. All right, everyone. Until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded. Science bless.